Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is G. It's the beginning of June. And quickly, I am going to show you so that you can see how to find this for yourself when a planet goes out of bounds. All right. I'm not sure if it's on re all the regular astrology websites. I just know that the uh, astrologer's website, because there's a lot of websites that aren't necessarily astrologer's websites. Not that they're not good, right? Uh, AstroSeek is one where we have a lot of people on the channel who are like, oh yeah, I love this. It's super user friendly. But there's certain things on there I can't find. So my go-to when I can't find what I need to find is to go to taffy came in the room and you know how that goes <laughs> so here's the screen i am at astro.com uh let me find my way to back to the there we go you guys can see it all right let me get my head out of there a little bit oh lord uh art of astrology this is astro.com you can see it up in the corner yeah yep so this is the the home page for astro.com and as you scroll down there's all these options but what we're going to do is focus on the right hand side of the page uh i know there's some commercials there's the current transits of the planets that you see right there transits current planet transits right sun moon venus mercury the nodes whatever and then you sc keep scrolling down in that same column it says 9000 year ephemeris right here you click on that do a double click and this is where it takes you so once you're here you're going to scroll down 9000 year ephemeris the most uh tempting thing to click on would be where it says most popular don't go there don't go there because we're looking for out of bounds planets. So the most popular does not include the out of bounds. When you are looking for a planet that is out of bounds, what you're looking for, the term they use is declinations. Okay. That's another, because you're observing when the planet goes out of the bounds. And so it's the planetary declination. So we have to then go down here where it says ephemeris files in PDF format. All right. We we are in the 21st century, so we're going to click on the 21st century, and then we're going to go to the year that we're in. But before we do that, there's two offerings. There's this one, which is just it says 21st century, and then it shows you all the years. Right under that, it says in bold with declination and latitude, and that's the ephemeris we need to be able to read where there is an out of bounds. So now we pick the year that we're in. We're in 2024. Click on that. And here it is. Astro dense ephemeris tables for the year 2024. And it doesn't say that it is a, that it is the declination one, but it will as you scroll down. This is a PDF. So it gives you January. Pay attention to the January. That's the regular ephemeris for January. Right below it, Right below it is the declinations. How do we know the difference? Pay attention to the regular ephemeris and look at the very first line or the very beginning top left-hand corner, January, day one, Monday, sidereal time, and then it goes sun, moon, and planets, okay? You go to the following chart down below, day one, it's a little bit different. It says D-E-C-L for the moon, D-E-C-L for the sun, right? And then it does that and the latitude. And this is for each planet. I got Taffy Bash in my leg again right now. <laughs> I spoke her up. So you see that? There it is for Mercury. There it is for Venus. There it is for Mars. All right, now, that's all I want you to look at on this chart because this is all past already. This was January. Hold on, let me get this rug rat. She's ripping at this chair. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to give her a disciplinary action and put her on a timeout. Hold on. All you got to do with Taffy is clap your hands. <laughs> of course, I did it a lot louder than that. She's tearing at the, her nail her claws are very long and so she starts tearing at the chair when she wants your attention. She knows how to get it. All right. So, we're going to go to June. So, we're scrolling scrolling through February. We know that the first month 
First chart is the regular, second chart is declinations. Same with March. First chart regular, second chart declinations. You get it? April, May. Was there anything out of bounds in May? The moon was out of bounds a couple of times. You see the red. In this declination chart, reds show up as the declinations because it's the declination chart. That was May. Let's go to June. This is the regular ephemeris. We want the second one. The second one gives us the declinations. You see that? All right. So we see some red on this chart. We see the moon, a little bit of red, right? Declinations in the moon showed up on June 6th, 7th, and 8th, and 9th, and 10th, right? For whenever you're watching this video, pay attention. The moon is the public. It's feelings. It's feminine energy. It's women. It's homes. So we think like housing market, uh, the war on women, women's rights. Uh, we think emotions and family and nurturing, and of course, the housing market. The sentiment, public sentiment, what the public's, you know, feeling associated with likely what they're hearing about in the news. It's something that sways the public. But let's get back to the other pertinent things of why I'm doing this video. Venus and Mercury are both showing red. You see that? Yeah. Here's Venus and Mercury. I'm on the website, so I can't do a lot of colors, right? Mercury's got the antennas, Venus, no antennas, but the red in this chart shows you out of bounds, right? 23, I think the teaching is 23.75 is considered out of bounds. So you see how they had 23, 24, didn't go out of bounds, but then when I hit 23, 31, it was considered out of bounds. You see that for Venus there? Hold on, I got a whole lot of other things popping up on the chart all of a sudden. I'm trying to see if I can expand this anymore. I can't. So they explained down here about the ecliptic and the out of bounds. Anyway, there's a lot of details down below. We won't get into that. The short of this is that out of bounds, Venus and Mercury. The dates are Venus goes out of bounds according to this chart. This chart is written according to universal time. Okay, so depending upon where you live on the planet and what time zone you're in, roughly, we're just going to go by what the chart says. And typically this chart is roughly about six hours ahead of the time zone that I'm in. So this says Wednesday for Venus and then Thursday for Mercury. Right. So interesting that we see Venus and Mercury showing up out of bounds. Let's just keep these colors right. Yep, red. We see Venus and Mercury simultaneously out of bounds from June 12th to June 29th. See it? June 12th to June 29th. Because by the 30th, technically by the 30th, they're showing that they're no longer out of bounds. They're showing they're at 2354, 2324. You see, so they're calling it that they are no longer out of bounds at that point. Now, what does this out of bounds stuff mean? It means extreme energy. That's the observations I've made. When a planet goes out of bounds, it goes extreme. So Mercury is news, is information, is talking, is the markets, it's details, it's data, it's learning. Like there's a lot of keywords for the planet Mercury. Throw some in, in the comments below. Uh, contribute, help out, share your knowledge. That's sharing, learning. That's Mercury. That's being online. It's the digital. It's the phone. Uh, maybe people feel like they're in a Mercury retrograde even because it goes kind of crazy. It goes out of bounds. It's out of control. So wacky, unpredictable events could occur. Now, does this mean like red flag, holy shit, uh, bat in the hatches, go under the, you know, go into the, no, it's not that. It's just saying to be aware of your mind, be aware of communication, be aware of the contradictory energy of mercury. You know, when we call people hypocrites where we're like, oh my God, they just said this the other day or the other minute. Now they're saying this extreme opposite of it. Right. And so it can be a time where we, where, where the duality and the con contrast becomes even more obvious for anybody where it isn't obvious yet. If you haven't been able to see where people who are online, people who are especially public figures, political figures, I should say, maybe public figures too. Um, and that, and that voice and that platform and using the platform to get across your beliefs 
and how you, whatever it is, whoever you're trying to persuade, right? June's a big month with Rigel, and we have a video on that on the channel. So check it out uh, to give you the information and, and to understand a little bit more about the Gemini energy and the duality. And then with Venus also being out of bounds, the red in Venus, out of bounds, my values, my money, the markets, but it's also desires, right? It's also desires. So that again is from June 12th to the 29th. And then things start to come down. They start to come off of the edge a little bit once we hit the 30th, because if I go and scroll further to the next month, July, we got to keep going to the second one because the second one is the declinations. We see the only thing in red is the moon, right? The only thing we're seeing in red is the moon. Okay. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you get it. So you know how to find it. I showed you how to get here, how to look it up, how to get this information for yourself, but Venus and Mercury are no longer out of bounds. All right. So hope this helped. If you uh, need any questions or if there's uh, anything else I can help you with, put it in the comments, let me know below, and I will see you in the next video. Ta-ta.